Welcome back. As we continue this morning right here on Sunrise, according to the Credit Bureau Monitor, over 9 million active credit consumers have impaired credit scores. Uh, that also shows that consumers are in debt with over 1.6 trillion rand, and that number keeps on climbing. Now, even though we are told to save and use our money wisely, it's extremely difficult to do so when you have no money to save and a multitude of debt to pay off. Joining us in studio to assist us uh, in this regard, of course, to give us a consumer advice on how to save and pay off our debt at the same time as a credit ombudsman, Niki Lala Mohan. Remember, you can be part of our conversation uh, by giving us a call on 11 or 1620. Also taking your comments uh, on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Okay, good morning to you, sir, and thanks very much for joining us. Morning, Penny, and morning to the viewers. Uh, yeah. 1.6 trillion rand, uh, that's how much uh, in debt we are, and about 9 million of us as South Africans, uh, we living a life of debt. How did we get here? Penny, I think, uh, you know, I think I mentioned to you earlier, we're the number one indebted country in the world. And I think it's very much in regard to our spending habits. South Africans are consumerist. We love spending money. Mm. We love spending money that we don't but have. So doesn't everybody else spend? No, uh, it's a culture in different nations, different countries. Uh, certain countries, saving is a big, big culture. Um, certain countries, you know, limited borrowing, etc. But it's because of our economy, the way things have opened up mm. and made credit freely available that people have taken advantage of that and, and to an extent got ourselves a bit over indebted. Okay, so we came from a, a closed up uh, situation and then once things open up, we just would like Absolutely. acquire, acquire, we're trying to acquire everything. Acquire everything, sometimes things that we don't need. Uh, often, what do they say? We buy things that we can't afford to impress people that we don't know. Mm. <coughs> okay, so that tra trajectory should be changing in a way. I mean, it should reach a peak of some sort and then where things normalize. Uh, how long will it take us to get to that? Look, it's, 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 it's the economy also plays a, an important factor in that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, before the boom period, uh, credit was freely available, the economy was booming, mm. um, there was employment, etc. So, you know, people getting employment, they get credit, they need a car, they need a house. But with the downturn in the economy worldwide, etc., you find that there's a shrinkage in, in, in credit activity, in all economic activity. Mm. So the one has a, pos a, a negative and a positive effect on the other. Okay. So let's. Uh, uh, what do you mean when you say we have an impaired credit score? What is that? An impaired credit score is a score that if you do not pay your accounts more than three consecutive payments, you get listed on a credit bureau. Mm. Now, there are different types of listings. You could be listed as a slow payer. You could be listed as handed over. You could be listed as a default. So the way a, a, a credit score works and the way a credit bureau, um, uh, the monitoring of your regular payments, mm. is that if you, if you take your credit report and you'll see a whole lot of numbers, if you pay regularly, it'll be zero. Mm -hmm. every month mm. but if you fail to pay one payment it will start reflecting one two three and by the time you hit six months that you did not pay mm. it doesn't record it anymore because by then you hand it over and and you've got collection agents after you and then you go into a different category of impairment like handed over adverse listing judgment mm. etc okay so w earlier on we were ch uh, chatting with uh, the the team about how you know even students coming out of university now suddenly find themselves uh, you know with bad credit uh, records how do young people even uh, Penny, one that? of the most challenging things is the young young people so called millennials mm -hmm. we did a survey on 200 young uh, millennials between the age of about 18 to 30 mm -hmm. And we ask them some five simple questions. Do you have credit? Do you owe money? What do you want if you have money? And what clearly came out was that most of them have bad credit history, mm -hmm. but they need money for things that they probably do not necessarily need, branded sunglasses, sneakers, to look good, etc. They have a very different mindset, the millennials, in regard to money mm -hmm. than the older generation. Okay, how, how do they 
acquire that bad credit score so early in their in their so lives. So when you're How young and you're a student, especially a university student, banks want to get you as a potential client because mm. in future, you know, you 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 a client to them and and you may be studying to become a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, they want you. So they offer you that little credit. You'll have a credit card. Most students have a credit card. They don't manage it properly. Mm -hmm. And then they get into difficulty. Mm. And the difficulty with that is that sometimes when they qualify and they apply for employment, they turn down because of bad credit history. Mm. So it, it, it plays against, okay. But in terms of, uh, it's important to note that you can only be denied an employment where that job requires you to have financial savviness. In other words, that you yourself must, if you're dealing with money or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. in that instance, they can go and look at your credit history to see how do you conduct your affairs before um, they can employ you. And if it shows that you have a bad credit, credit record in terms of your own affairs, the chances are you're not going to get that job if you're dealing with money. We're living, you know, beyond our means, uh, outside of the fact that, you know, we're living in difficult times, terms like economically. So how can, how does a credit ombudsman help me? Maybe, Penny, I think what we should uh, start by is telling you what we do. We resolve disputes between credit grantors and consumers in two categories. We do disputes in relation to enlistments on the credit bureau. Mm -hmm. So all your bureau records, the old so-called ITC. Mm. If you feel that you're unfairly placed on the bureau or a enlistment has not fallen off in the time when it's supposed to have fallen off, you come to us, we investigate. What's the duration of the time that it should fall Look, off? Look, different categories, different enlistments have different categories. Mm. Generally one year, a judgment remains for five years but a judgment is valid generally for 30 years. 30 and years. So, and that includes your taxes, etc. Mm. But for bureau records, it's only there for five years. But a judgment can be executed within a period of 30 years. M many people don't know that. Mm. So the longest one is a judgment for five years, judgment, sequestrations, etc. Different categories like handed over, one year, slow payer, two years, but generally, uh, most five years, now we're moving, they've shortened the period to mostly one year. So after one year, your bureau record is cleared uh, in the event that you were placed on the bureau. Okay. In an instance of liquidation, you become a, a, a preferred creditor. So before other people get paid out, employees get paid first. But it takes a bit of a while. My advice to CD would be to in get in touch with the credit provider Tell them what the circumstances are. Normally give proof that you're unemployed, you've been retrenched or the company is in liquidation. Ask them for some leniency in terms of whether they could, you could pay it off mm. over a period of time. Normally companies, um, are, are they have debt review departments, etc., that will help you. Mm. And uh, the general rule is that whenever you are in difficulty, go and approach your credit provider. Mm. They are there to help you. They want you to pay that. They will accommodate lower payments, etc. But in this instance, you know, the liquidation does take a while. Mm. Whether the credit provider is prepared to wait for a year or not, I don't know. It depends on their credit policy, not but generally not. You know, they would give you up to six months, etc. But a year or two, no, they would then proceed because they have to account for that money and proceed in terms of legal action or write off the debt or whatever they've got to um, like I said, account for that money. So uh, um, I think the best is continue talking to the credit provider, tell them what your circumstances are, mm. stave off their judgment, be in touch with the li liquidator, when will you likely pay us, get confirmation, get a letter uh, to the effect that there will be some payment so that they know that it will come. You know, show some proof, show that you are intent paying that debt back and then they'll be a bit more lenient.